Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. I think one of the problems NFL fans have in general is recency bias. A lot of times when something happens, we immediately proclaim that it was one of the greatest plays we've ever seen, or one of the stupidest calls we've ever seen, or that nothing like this has ever happened before. But there have been roughly 16,000 games in NFL history. We have hours upon hours of footage to look at. And when I do this dumb decision series, you might notice a pretty even distribution across the post-merger years. Of the 16 episodes I've done so far, only three of them have come from beyond the 2003 season. My point is this, as great or as stupid as some things may look, odds are it's happened before, and while it seems crazy now, we're going to forget about it awfully soon. But there's some things that you just know when you see it that are going to go down in history. This obviously applies for playoff games and the Super Bowl in particular. You know anytime you see a crazy play take place on football's biggest stage, that it's going to be remembered forever. But it can apply to regular season games as well. When I saw the Odell Beckham catch, I knew right away that I was going to be watching that play for a long time after that. When you saw the butt fumble, you knew right away that it was going to live in infamy. So even though I hate recency bias and try to avoid it at all costs on this channel, hence why lots of my videos are on events before the 21st century, there are exceptions. And folks, we have to talk about what happened this Thanksgiving. Because even though I've watched a lot and a lot of football, that was the worst fourth down coaching I've ever seen in my life. Mike McCarthy, you've left me no choice. Welcome to Dumb Decisions. Before I break down what happened here, this whole series is about taking an in-depth look at decisions made during games that were clearly awful from the start. This isn't something that looked bad in hindsight. Rather, this is something that looked awful almost immediately. These are moves where your gut instinct tells you right away that there is no way this can possibly work. And sure enough, your gut instinct was smarter than that of an NFL head coach. And for this one, we're taking a look at the mind of Mike McCarthy. On one hand, he won the Super Bowl. On the other hand, based on what's happened since, and based on what was reportedly said by eventual Hall of Fame quarterback Aaron Rodgers about him, it's looking more and more by the day that the Vince Lombardi Trophy had nothing to do with McCarthy. For those of you who are stumbling upon this video past the year 2020, here's a brief recap of the context going into this game. It's November 26, 2020, Thanksgiving matchup between the Dallas Cowboys and the Washington football team. Even though both teams are sitting at 3-7 and, and are among the worst teams in football from a wins and losses standpoint, the NFC East is a dumpster fire, to the point where the winner of this game will have first place in the division. You've got the whole country watching this first place matchup, which just feels weird to say. But 2020 has been a weird year, in case you haven't been able to tell. In the second quarter, Dallas is tied with Washington at 10 apiece. With six minutes left in the half, facing a third and one situation, Dallas gives the ball to CD Lamb. He stopped just short of the first down. Most of the time in this situation, especially in a tie game, you punt the ball away. But Dallas decides to keep its offense out on the field and go for it. You expect a quarterback sneak here, or a run to the halfback that you gave $90 million to. But Mike McCarthy decides to subvert all expectations and call a pass. It doesn't work. Dallas turns it over on downs, and with the short field, Washington scores a touchdown on the ensuing drive. Now fast forward to the fourth quarter. Washington is up by four, and after a sack on third down, Dallas is now facing fourth and ten. Most of the time in this situation, especially pinned on your own 24-yard line, you are punting the ball away. Instead, Dallas decides to call a fake punt. Spoiler alert, it's a really bad fake punt. It's one of those where you could tell the moment that was happening that it wasn't going to work. And it wound up not only backfiring, but wound up leading to an implosion. Antonio Gibson scored on the very next play. What was once a 20-16 game wound up becoming a 41-16 blowout in front of a national television audience. Both decisions on their own are bad, but when you combine them into the same game and the same back pattern, it makes it absolutely baffling. So with that being said, let's take a look at why throwing on fourth and a foot in your own territory, and then compounding that mistake with a fake punt on your own 23-yard line, is a horrible idea. And let's start with the first play under the microscope, which is the fourth down pass. Here's my thing with going for it on fourth and a foot. I've got no problem with it. All you have to do is fall forward and you've got the first down. Unless you fumble the snap, or you've got Troy Palomalu timing the snap perfectly and jumping over everyone, 
you physically cannot lose yards on a quarterback sneak. And Andy Dolan was awfully good at these situations in Cincinnati at just falling forward. During his eight seasons with the Bengals, there were 12 situations where he was facing a fourth and one and kept it himself on a QB sneak. Of those 12, he successfully converted on 11 of them. His success rate on QB sneaks on fourth and one was 91.7%. That is exceptionally high, and it gets an A grade in pretty much any school grading system. And even though the Red Rifle isn't the most mobile or athletic quarterback, again, all you gotta do on a QB sneak is fall forward, and you get it. You might be wondering what the one QB sneak was that was unsuccessful and failed. Well, that came in the first quarter of a 2013 game against the Ravens. There are two things of note with this QB sneak. Number one, you might be able to argue that he got it, although it is tough to tell. But the important part about this failed attempt is that it was pretty much a full yard that he needed to get. Fourth and one can mean fourth and one and a half, or it can mean two feet. Now compare that spot to the spot that Dalton was at against Washington. That is not even close to a full yard like what transpired in that Baltimore game seven years ago. If he falls forward, barring something crazy, he gets this. Mike McCarthy decided to pass up on a play that had a success rate of 92%, or maybe even 100% depending on where you're spotting it, and opted to throw it instead. Look, I don't care whether or not there was pass interference on this play. Even if it were, it's a stupid call. Way too much can go wrong on a play like that. The receiver drops it. The receiver doesn't get open. The offensive line breaks down. The success rate is not even close when compared to just falling forward. In fact, when Dalton threw it on 4th and 1 in his 8 years at Cincinnati, his success rate was 50%. That is not very high, and it gets an F grade in pretty much any school grading system. And to make matters even worse, one month ago, in Week 7, when Dallas played Washington, Mike McCarthy pulled this exact same nonsense. It was fourth and half a yard, and Dallas decided to go for it near midfield. And instead of just having Andy Dolan fall forward, they called a pass play. Shocker, it failed. What's that thing about the definition of insanity again? If you don't remember that, do you remember the scene in Family Guy where the Griffins have the option of receiving a boat or a mystery box, and Peter says this? A boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat! In this instance, the boat is the QB sneak and the mystery box is the pass. When Andy Dolan had half a yard or less to go and kept it himself on fourth down, he literally never failed. The Cowboys passed up on what should have been an automatic first down and did it in their own territory just to add insult to injury. But we're not done yet. Because if it was just one play, not that I would let this slide, but I probably wouldn't be making a video about this. Look, we've seen coaches make really stupid decisions on 4th down all the time. If you follow this series, you know that we've seen teams go for it on 4th and 35 for no reason. We've seen teams call the same play 4 times in a row, even though it failed every other time. We've seen teams call fake punts to their own end zone with players who are brand new and didn't know the playbook, and we've even seen the Cowboys have an absolutely baffling 4th down decision against the Eagles in 1995, which you can check out in the upper right corner. So if it was just that, well I'd be laughing at Mike McCarthy, I wouldn't be making this video. It's the fact that two hours later, he somehow managed to top that. Because in the fourth quarter, they called the fake punt with Cedric Wilson, which for many reasons did not work. And there's a plethora of reasons why calling a fake punt, much less this fake punt, is a bad idea. For one, you're down by four and your defense was playing pretty well in the second half. At that point, Washington had three drives in the second half. The first drive ended in a field goal only because Washington started on Dallas' 33-yard line anyways, following a costly fumble by Zeke Elliott. The second drive ended in an Alex Smith interception, and the third drive ended in a punt. Alex Smith had completed one of his last five passes. If you punt this ball away, the odds of Washington driving down the field and getting any points are not particularly high. But if you don't get this fake, as we saw here, that could be game over. You're giving Washington an incredibly short field. And this fake punt in particular was awful. The point of a fake punt is to catch the other team off guard. Kind of tough to do that when not even two months ago, you watched the Cowboys put this play on tape with Cedric Wilson. Granted, it's not a fake punt, but it's the same idea. Someone gets the ball, then Wilson gets it on the reverse and looks to throw it. And just in case Washington forgot about this, don't worry. Because Dallas have the courtesy of opening their bag of tricks to do something similar five minutes before this. They ran it with C.D. Lamb, but Washington snuffed it out. So let me get this straight. By throwing for it on fourth and a foot earlier, you made it clear to Ron Rivera and company that you're willing to take chances. 
by running a similar play on the last drive, which resulted in a loss of four yards, you've made it clear to Ron Rivera and company that you're opening up the bag of tricks. This all means that Washington had every reason to expect this and know what's coming. And even if they didn't, even if they had no idea what was going on, the problem with a fake punt like this is inherent in its design. The point of a fake is to fool people, and that by the time the opposition realizes that, it's too late, and there's nothing they can do about it. Let's say Washington is completely fooled and has no idea what's coming. Even if that's the case, when Wilson gets the ball here, he's at the 10-yard line. He's got to get to the 34-yard line to get the first down. That means that he has to get 24 yards on this and hope that in those 24 yards, nobody on Washington realizes that something funky is going on. Considering the fact that he's not the fastest guy in the world, and prior to the scheme, he had, hang on, let me check my notes. Oh yeah, negative 11 rushing yards. That's a tall order. I think the quote by special teams coach John Fassel highlights just how stupid this play was. He said, we're asking Cedric to do a first read and a second read, and really nothing past that. Cedric said he couldn't see. He's not a quarterback. Asking your wide receiver to make multiple reads when he's not a quarterback is just a recipe for disaster. After the game, Mike McCarthy, for some reason, doubled down on his decision to run the fake punt, saying that the call was solid and that you can't worry about the negatives. He said you either convert it or you don't convert it. The flow of the game, all those things are factored into that decision. Was he watching a different game? What flow of the game, with Washington's offense being unable to move the ball, dictated that you call a fake punt in that situation from that far back, knowing that if Washington stops it, they are almost guaranteed points. He then added it was a solid play call. It's a good play design. Their gunner made a good play. But again, when you called a similar play with Wilson earlier in the season, and you called a similar play five minutes ago with Lamb that got snuffed out, what did you think was going to happen? With both the fourth and foot and this fake punt, if they were called on their own, I might be avoiding this video entirely. Heck, this isn't even the stupidest thing a Cowboys coach has done on Thanksgiving. Dave Campo's decision to kick the extra point down 10 midway through the fourth quarter beats this by a landslide. You can check that out in the upper right corner. Just the fact that McCarthy made not one, but two absolutely questionable decisions on fourth down left me no choice here. So what did we learn from all this? If you need a foot, just fall forward, especially if your quarterback is amazingly good at falling forward. If your defense is playing well, then trust your defense and don't disrupt the flow of the game. Don't get too cute and overthink things when you don't have to. Oh, and if you're going to call a fake punt, don't call one if you ran a similar play five minutes ago and the opposition snuffed it out with ease. Because when all of these elements are in play, you can't exactly be surprised when these plays backfire. Talk about some dumb decisions. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, and subscribe down below if you haven't already, as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and win cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaroGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.